Hello and welcome to another edition of Amateur Radio Video News. I'm Gary Pierce, KN4AQ. And in this program, we're going to take a look at digital voice for amateur radio. It's all very new and cutting edge. But before we get into the ham radio part, I want to take a step back and look at the big picture. Uh, no, not you. Come on back here. I want to look at some of the stuff that I've collected over the years for digital communications. Uh, I think we start with the humble CD developed back in the 1980s. Got my first digital cell phone, my second digital cell phone. But until recently, there hasn't been any digital voice sent over the air. That's changing. The first modes for digital voice are here now. And I wonder, how much do hams know about them? I asked that question at a local ham fest. Yeah, I really don't know that much about uh, digital voice at this time, but I will look into it. I know D-Star exists. I've been uh, seeing a few advertisements for new radios out. I try to read it when it comes out in the magazines and understand it, but I'm not doing a good job. It's going to take up more bandwidth. It's noisy. Nobody can understand it. It's just more QRM on the band. Uh, I've done some research on digital voice, but I uh, really haven't gotten into it yet. Oh boy, I don't know a whole lot about it. I know a good bit from the cellular telephone industry too, because we've been using digital voice for a good while now. The question is, how many people are using it, and um, what does it cost to get into? And I think it's a good idea. And I think it's expensive right now. It is the future. The future? Well, I guess we better get to know it. My first peek at HF Digital Voice came at the Dayton Hamvention in 2005 at the AOR booth. Jeff Reinhardt, AA6JR, was giving demonstrations of the ARD 9800 and 9000 fast modems. Okay, this is analog, analog, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we're at 14, 2, 3, 6, I'm 20 meters, can you hear me okay? This is digital FSD, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, digital 5M, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There is a little latency, there's about a second delay between my words and what you hear, but uh, when you're on the radio, nobody would know that. Okay, interesting. I wasn't expecting that delay. Jeff explained that when you push the transmit button, the modem has to spend about a second sending those synchronizing tones, and it buffers your speech until those are done. But here's the $64 question. Why do digital? In a forum at the 2007 Hamvention, Jeff explained. In clarity, uh, we can offer you crystal clear audio. You don't have to constantly be tweaking the connections or the settings on your radio to do this. And there's no background noises or static crashes that you're going to hear in that audio. Uh, do we have any further check-ins with the AOR Digital Voice Net K0 PFX? K4RP in Brooksville, Florida. Oh, you're doing great. Uh, provocation is good this way, anyway. Uh, I got a good coffee on Jason, and uh, I had to turn the beam for uh, Gary in one FFX, but uh, it's funny. <laughs> I guess uh, Jason's got a bit more power, evidently. Most of the time, it's just plug and play. Turn up your audio until the LED quits blinking here and uh, you're ready to uh, decode. And uh, for transmit, it's just a matter of uh, squeezing the microphone. It sends out a uh, sync tone and the other end receives a sync tone and you're immediately on uh, decoding uh, digital voice. CQ20, CQ20. If you have a computer with a sound card in the shack, there are some free programs that let you get on digital voice for almost no extra cost. The first one Mel demonstrated is WinDRM, a ham radio version of Digital Radio Mondial, written by Sesco, HB9TLK. Okay, Mel. J0PFX, take four again. You're right on 14 on SNR. And uh, right toward the end there, you're. Nine. Uh, great audio. The equipment chain you need, the hardware you'd need for uh, digital voice is uh, actually quite simple. Uh, it, works, it works best with two sound cards. It can be done with one. But uh, what we found uh, early on was uh, using a USB sound card, which uh, here's one here. Uh, actually, that's the entire card right there. Uh, uh, audio out, audio in. You plug your uh, typical PC microphone in that maybe cost you two or three bucks and plug your uh, speaker system here and your uh, encoded and decoded audio is out of this card right here. 
And finally, there's a problem with digital voice signals not being recognized by sideband operators. Now this is what it sounds like if you're uh, tuning across with a uh, analog radio. Since many hams have never heard digital voice, many have not even heard of digital voice, they can start operating on a busy frequency without realizing it. Getting their attention can be difficult. Uh, Roger, we're running a digital voice, digital voice net here. Uh, digital voice net on 14236, which is digital. 233 and 230, they're all digital. Now, if digital voice for HF is not quite ready for prime time, it's a different story on VHF and above. WAXA, we'll listen out at NNGM. See you later. The big news in amateur radio digital voice on VHF and UHF is the D-Star system. And by the Dayton Hamvention in May 2006, some of the earliest of early adopters had had repeaters on the air long enough that they had worked out most of the bugs, and they were ready to tell the world. But this video isn't so much about them. It's more about you, the potential D-Star user. Mm, maybe. It's, I think maybe just a big fan going through. Okay, Curtis. Let's see what's in it for you. To find out, I took a road trip and visited some of the people who put up D-Star repeaters. The guys in Dallas, Alabama, Chicago, and St. Louis. It's going to be a while before they get up. Now, before I yap anymore, let's sit back and listen to some D-Star in operation. Doing fine, just uh, playing with the uh, 91 AD a little bit and uh, trying to decipher some of the messages as they scroll across the bottom of the screen. Okay, let me give you a quick overview of the D-Star repeater system here at the Texas Interconnect team. We start with power supply for DC, circuit breakers, power amplifiers, two meter repeater, 440 repeater, 23 centimeter data radio. And now it's time to explain the gateway, the internet connection, and what you have to do with a D-Star radio to be part of it all. We do have worldwide networking. We can talk to users around the world. We currently have people online in Darwin, Australia, all over the United States and the United Kingdom. CQ Dallas, CQ Dallas, N7MK, Phoenix, Arizona, anybody copy? We're back in Dallas, back down on the street, and that's Mark Kratz, N7MK, in Phoenix on the radio, talking to Fred. Well, this is great. I mean, you guys, you guys sound just like, you know, any of the users locally here do. Can't, can't tell any difference. D-Star routes your signal by using call signs that are actually programmed into your radio using the on-screen menus. There are four key call signs. We can run 128 kilobaud on 1200 megahertz using the ID1 digital radio system. A relatively high-speed Ethernet-based data system, basically the internet or an intranet, that works wirelessly for miles with no other supporting infrastructure. One of the first big tests came at the Marine Corps Marathon in Washington, D.C. in October 2006. Well, this year um, we're doing an operational test. We have two 1.2 gig channels up, and we are basically providing Ethernet um, service to the seven aid stations out on the course. Here we are inside the comms trailer. We have two ICOM RP2Ds, so they're 1.2 gig. 10 watt radios, um, 128 kilobit per second radios. At the aid stations, the amateurs there will have laptops. Those laptops will connect to the ICOM ID1 radios. They'll use a browser to browse to the correct database and enter the information of, for the runners. Worked, uh, worked as advertised, they could see it up on the hill. Uh, pretty easy. P25 has been around long enough that the first generation of equipment is being replaced and hams have been converting radios and repeaters to the ham bands. There are no uh, amateur commercial or amateur available P25 units yet. Uh, there is quite a bit of commercial equipment that's available. Uh, stuff has fallen out from the government sector and the public safety sectors, and there is quite a bit of it available on the used market, some of it quite cheaply. Which brings me to my final point. How worried should you be about your analog radios becoming obsolete. 